this lesson, we're going to be setting up the scrolling and the scrolling content within our element scroller. Let's add in one more event listener. And this event listener is going to listen for whenever the page loads. And whenever the page loads, then we're going to invoke a function. So there's a number of ways to do that. We're going to use the window on load method. And this is a default method within the Windows object. We'll initiate a function called setup scroll. Let's build that function. So setting up that function, and this is gonna be basically our setting up function. We're gonna need some content in order to add in here. So let's set up a variable for that. And this is main content area. I'm gonna copy and paste some content in. So this is some general lorem ipsum content. So I can use that content and paste it into the element. So that's gonna be pasted within that S element. So making a selection of the S element, updating the inner HTML, and we are gonna be using the paragraph tags, so we're gonna paste it in as HTML. We also want to set up and select our bounding box, so I'll show you what that is. So selecting a variable called temp, now that we've added in all of that content in there, let's get our bounding client rectangle values. And we'll console log those out. We'll take a closer look at what that is. So opening up our browser, do a quick refresh. So now we've got our content is placed within that element. And we also see that we've got this bounding client rectangle value here. And this is an object, so return back as an object. We see we've got the bottom, we've got the height, left, right, top, width. And we need some of these values in order to calculate out where our content is and how much more we need to scroll it to get to the top of the page. So we're gonna take a closer look at that as well. So opening up our browser, we're gonna take a closer look at what the element get bounding client does. Uh, so going over to the Mozilla developer network, there's a, some syntax here, some information as well as an example. So you see within the example that it's gonna be returning back that same information that we just saw. So basically it allows you to get element information really easily using this one method. There's also some additional specifications and of course browser compatibility, but for the most part, it's pretty good. It's across most browsers. So let's go back into our application that we're building out. And now that we've got our height and we've got the height of the element, we can set certain values. So we can take our C element, so this is the container element, selecting our style height, we're gonna adjust the height of the element using the values that are contained within that temp object. And we do have a value of height, and we wanna make sure that it's picks. So you do need to write the picks so that it renders out as a string value. And that's how you set the style of an element. We also need to have our top position for the S element. So doing the same thing where we're getting our style and we're positioning it at the top. And that's gonna also be temp height plus pick. And lastly, we're gonna set an interval. So that's gonna be a variable that we're gonna set up. So we can call it scroll interval. And here, let's set up an interval where we're gonna call a function scrolling element. And we need to specify how often we're gonna call this function. So going into our functions, we've got a few functions to create. So creating our scrolling function. So this one's gonna get invoked on the interval. So regularly intervaled. And let's also position our elements. We're gonna apply some styling to those elements. So going into our style sheet area, we've got our C element. So mainly so we can see it, let's set a background color. So this background color, also I'm gonna set a default width for it. So this can be 400 picks or whatever makes sense for you. Setting up a font size is always a good idea. So I'm just gonna keep it as one EM. I'm gonna position this one, so position it relative. And also adding in a border so we can actually see where it is and where it's sitting on the page. And we're gonna hide the overflow. And also let's apply to the other element, the S element. 
let's uh, apply a position to that. So absolute position, so we can move it around. Uh, we're going to set a default of zero for the left position. Also for the top position, zero. And we'll set a width of 100%. And that's the S element inside of the C element. So our main container, that's the S element that's contained with inside of it. And this needs a hash as well. So let's uh, see what that looks like. So now when we look at it, we don't see any text yet. And that's because we've got that overflow hidden. So if I was to eliminate that, you see all of the text there. It's all sitting there ready to go. And what's going to happen and what we're going to do in the upcoming lesson is we're going to get all of this text. We're going to move it up and move it right to the top of this element. And then we're going to have it scrolling constantly up. So go ahead and make these adjustments to your application. And we're going to introduce some more functionality in the upcoming lesson where we're going to actually make this content move and scroll. So set up your content. You can add in whatever content you want within the application. Also update some of your styling. Uh, you do need to set position as absolute so that it can move. Uh, also, uh, it's always a good idea for the border, the background, so that we know where our main container is. And then going down to Windows on load. So whenever the Windows loads, whenever the window loads, then we initiate the function set, set up scroll. And this is where we add the content to the element. We get our bounding box of our content. So that lets us calculate out what the height of the C element is. And we don't have to set it at this height. Uh, it's just something, it's just a value that we're going to be making use of, as well as our top position of our content. So wherever the top is, and this is going to be uh, essentially the height plus the plus picks will equal wherever the top is needs to be. And once you've got all of these values in place, so what that is doing is it's positioning that text just below the visible area and it's ready to initiate the scroll. We've set it up on an interval. So that's why this function is being invoked every 50 milliseconds. And that's why we've got a whole lot of work. So go ahead and add this into your project. And coming up next, we're going to create some more interaction.